Today, hey. Okay. <laughs> Today we're gonna make a monkey jam. Are you so excited? Yeah. Here's a quick sneak peek of what it will look like. We started off with sanding, and then I realized it was gonna take me a really long time, and this is a weekend project, and I wanted my husband's help, so I decided to start putting it together instead. Here we are making the back of the kitchen flat so that it can stand up straight with the base. And then we had to screw it in to the bottom. We just used a drill to make a hole and then used long screws to attach it. We did three screws along the back, one in each two by four. And it was still feeling a little bit wobbly so my husband decided to add some from the side too. To make the sign at the end that says Mud Kitchen, we took some of the leftover slats from another pallet and screwed them on the back to be a little bit taller than the back of the kitchen. To make the counter line up with the bottom of the Mud Kitchen, we had to cut off the back of one of the pallets. Then we measured how high we wanted the legs and cut them. To make a spot for the legs, we had to cut a notch out of the floor of it on, on all four sides of the bottom piece of the mud kitchen. And then you, we just screwed the legs into the base. My husband had an audience at every moment of this project, whether it was me, my five-year-old, or my one-and-a-half-year-old. Also, you'll see my son sanding throughout the video, but he really wanted a job to do and it was like the perfect thing for him to do that, you know, let him be involved. Then we just placed the countertop on top of the legs and then my husband, again, screwed them into place. Also, almost every single time we are screwing a nail in, we had to also drill a hole first so that it would go in smooth. Then we added a little finishing touch to the front so that it was smooth instead of open. For that piece, we just used an extra slat from another pallet. For the sink, I just traced a circle that was a little bit smaller than the bowl we were planning on using. Then my husband cut the circle out and also had to cut the ones below it so that the bowl would sit flat. My husband is the true MVP for this project because we didn't have all the right tools, but he still made it work. Surprisingly, the sign took us forever to get hung because our screws kept breaking. We only wanted to use small ones that wouldn't stick through the back, so it took us a few tries to get the right size of screws to work. Here I am trying to screw a small one in with just my handheld screwdriver, and it broke off. Also, we were so tired at this point that we were sick of the sign and just literally wanted to be done. Finally, we got it to work, and then I started sanding the whole thing down the next day. Not gonna lie, I thought this part was gonna take a long time, but I didn't realize how bad my hand would start to hurt, so I had to take quite a few breaks. Also, if you've used a sander for a long period of time, your hand can start to get like tingly, and it was freaking me out. Then I decided I wanted to stain it to help make it more waterproof, because obviously it's going to be outside. I just picked a transparent one. Um, I think it's like Valspar one coat. This was probably my favorite step because it's so satisfying to paint the whole thing one color. It was hard to decide what I wanted to do with the sign, but um, I ended up deciding to paint it white and then add lettering on later. While I waited for the white to dry before adding the letters, we added the hooks to hang like 
cup measures or pots or pans. So we just drilled a hole and then added these little gold hooks from Hobby Lobby. Then I decided to paint the letters on. I was gonna use my Cricut, but I didn't know how long the vinyl would last outside. So hand painting it was, it took me quite a long time. And I'm a perfectionist, so obviously there's things that I would change with the writing, but it turned out cute. So there's no going back now. Here's the finished product. I'll try to link everything in my stories on what we bought, but most of it was just random things from our kitchen. If you have any questions on how it all came together, just leave me a comment and I'll try to get back to you. The best part is that both my five-year-old and my one-and-a-half-year-old love it, and we've already played so much with it this summer.